Howdy arty aliens and welcome! I am Paul Yateman, I draw stuff. In today's video I am drawing in a style akin to HR Giga. This style has been dubbed biomechanical. I'll be using two blunt pencils. I've not sped up today's drawing as it took me about 10 minutes and that's not too uh, long for a vid I think. I'm going to chat about stuff as I play back the drawing so that should be interesting enough to keep you sticking around for the rest of the video. I call this work Dicta Cranicom. My lack of time also means my filming camera was not repositioned so there will be a bird's eye view of this entire drawing. I do have a large enough facility for a permanent overhead video setup for at least a dedicated drawing uh, station at home. Due to being a tad tipsy and oh so ready for bed during today's sketch I limit myself to the blunt HB and 2B pencils because that's what's immediately in front of me. I also keep an eye on the time. As for the bulk of my sketches, I start with the overall shape before adding detail. The nose I drew pretty wonky at the start and I came back to that later to fix it up. The idea with the eyes was to use camera lenses and use the entire eye socket area. For the mouth, rather than lips and teeth, I drew a grill. After my Giga's alien copy a few days ago, I've begun to incorporate more of the lines and segments shown on that into my biomechanical style. At the moment, all that involves are diverging and converging lines with the odd circle here and there, and no indication of depth. It's a start though. My Perchicon 1 and 2 videos came out fairly sharp, so that was a win. I accomplished that by repositioning my webcam to about 25cm for my drawing surface, upping the bit rate of my recording, and double checking focus before beginning, so I must remember to do that. I ditched my Canon EOS utility due to low resolution some time ago, although I am going to try using my SLR again. I am waiting on the equipment to arrive to allow me to interface the camera directly via HDMI, so basically a couple of cables at this point. For the nipples, I added horns as why not? If using an HDMI interface produces an acceptably sharp video, I might look into repurposing my old EOS 300D, assuming a broken SLR mechanism doesn't stop me from gathering video, although I am going to try repairing it for the second time. I could also try and find a cheap B-roll camera with a sensor of about 20 megapixels, which is probably the better option. When I first drew the lines on the right forearm, which is on the left to the viewer, they were the wrong way up, so I erased them and I redrew them. I was going to destroy over the top. The line work is pretty haphazard here, but it is effective and that is all that is needed. Here we go, lines right way up. Come on and let your body flow. Not too sure about the size of the skull at this point. About a week ago, I self-published my first book on Amazon's KDP platform. It is a 30-piece drawing colouring book and contains a lot of egg drawings and some animal drawings. I made all of the artwork in Illustrator, either directly with the pen and shape tools and clipping masks or from thumbnails I then scanned in and traced into a new layer. Some of the designs I think would lend themselves to an adult colouring book, though I need to figure out how to do the fancy pants patterns and preferably hand drawn, not computer generated. I found it a challenge to keep the artwork consistent insofar as simple bold lines and not complex as the target user is the beginning colorist, so maybe 4 to 10 years old. The pecs and intercostals I drew from memory. The anatomy here is meant to be a little skew with, so any deviations from your typical human are intentional. Character's left arm design is a mirror of his, her, its right arm, as this is a bilaterally symmetrical character. And lines up the right way first time. Yesterday I published my second colouring book. Key word research showed less than 150 hits for spacecraft colouring books. 
I've been drawing imaginary spacecraft since about 1980 and February's hashtag Chris Foss Challenge saw some new additions to this. Uh, I also scanned in reasonable quality line work before colouring these. These I live traced into Illustrator. During the curation of this book, I think I've found my workflow if I am to continue with colouring book content. I tried tracing my old art in Photoshop. The lines came out uneven. I then printed out about 20 of my old designs at A4 size and transferred them to tracing paper. Uh, to do this, I used the black marker for the outline and a fine liner for the detail. This helped keep the line work look consistent. It then enabled me to scan the images back in, run through my remove lines from the background operator instruction I detailed here a few weeks back to remove the lines and get a pleasing look. I'll leave links to both books in the video description. As this is a biomechanical work, I added a smattering of pipes. So, arm veins, neck tendons. Keyword research shows about 16 hits for biomechanical colouring book. That probably means there is no interest or little interest in a book of that nature. But hey, I'm going to make one once my hashtag HRGiga challenge is over anyway. Style wise, I am in two minds, keeping it simple or keeping it grayscale. I guess grayscale could be, say, a marker job, simple could be shading job, so maybe I could do two. Who knows? We will see. I'll post a couple of content review videos for the Easter colouring book and the spacecraft colouring book in the coming days. Throughout this drawing, I am keeping things fairly loose. Rather than sharpen the pencils, I rotate them periodically, which provides a marginally sharper tip. That leads to some issues where the lines were way thicker than I intended. But uh, overall the line weight and quality is consistent so it doesn't detract from the main drawing. What do you think about non-fungible tokens or NFTs? There have been some crazy priced sales with minted artwork making some artists instantly rich. Oh, how to be rich. That's about the only way I'll ever be able to buy a house so I'll clutch those straws. Do you think they are a flash in the pan or here to stay? Would you buy them? I've toyed with minting a couple of works. The entry point is about $100 after what's called a gas fee and there isn't any guarantee that you'll make any sales. There is a chance that the Ethereum left over in my account could be worth a lot more in 10 years time, so that's a bonus. It might be worth buying some of this cryptocurrency anyway based on that. I can't see the attraction of NFTs, but having deleted my Bitcoin wallet back in 2014, which now might have actually been worth something, I may as well jump on this new NFT bandwagon. A hundred dollar risk here it might mean a couple of thousand in 10 years, so that's pretty good risk reward ratio, and better than a kick in the nads. Having gotten this far into my drawing, I felt the head was lacking and also a bit small. What better way the guy who rides it than by adding a nice big phallic element to the work? Here I drew what I imagined to be a shorter version of a mix between the alien and alien cranium. The central ridge, which I add a little later, is a little off centre, so if I continued to work on this drawing, I'd either reposition it or add a parallel one, so there'd be two ridges. The channel recently acquired its ninth subscriber. Woohoo! I'm moving up in the world! Hey, isn't that great? I was having a think about my science-based channel recently and how I've been neglectful of it. I'm in two minds about creating content for it. I have a few training programs in my box of things to write, so I could definitely add content. What is putting me off are thoughts of what's the point. My lab role became redundant about 10 years ago and no one has taken me up on the option to employ me despite lots of job applications and lots of job interviews. Why put in the effort to maintain and improve in that area if there is no return on investment? Employers seem to value recent relevant experience but not skills, knowledge, education and the ability to think. Pleasingly, it looks like I'm returning to the role of technical trainer in my day job. That will give me incentive to improve on my delivery of training. I won't be able to actually write programs because that's not allowed at work, so that's at least you can't modify the existing training programs, so that's annoying. So I can continue developing my own training and delivering it here, and that will only certainly help me. Another upside is maybe I can leverage my training delivery to get a job where that is what I do 60 to 90 percent of the time. Perhaps that will get me back into pharma.
If I am ever in a position to employ people for a lab again, or employ people in general, I will be giving candidates with backgrounds like mine extra consideration. That's not to populate a workplace with clones of me, more so to value what people can bring to a role, even if they have no direct experience in something. If they can read and follow standard operating procedures and operator instructions, then with the mandated training, they can do the job required of them, just like me. For most of the rest of this drawing, I am adding shading and providing a little extra detail and thinking that as 10 minutes have passed, I should call the job done. What do you think of this long format where I talk about things unrelated to what I'm doing? Should I keep them up? Is it just noise? This style of video is probably not sustainable as I'm not a fan of small talk or talking where there is no point to it. It does challenge me to find things to chat about and helps me with my writing in order to script my voiceovers or my general outlines, so there is that. The other options are doing time-lapse or real-time videos where I talk about what I'm doing and why and relating it back to either my graphic design training or experience as an artist and referencing things such as colour theory and line weight, which is more or less what I'm trying to do in my earlier videos. Should I do tutorials specifically perhaps? As I'm getting back into drawing, filming my main drawing of the day and invariably posting the video means I'm uploading a lot of stuff. Is that interesting to you either as a budding artist, peer or experienced artist? Is there something you have seen that you would love to see me explore or delve into? I figure that assuming I keep up my monthly challenges until the end of the year, I'll have a lot of base content after which perhaps the YouTube algorithm will consider I know something about drawing and make my videos show up in suggestions or appear high in searches. At any rate, once my year of challenges is over, I expect I'll move to one to two posts a week where I do a feature video. What do you think? Should I turn this into a 10 minute interval series culminating in a finished 60 to 180 minute or something else piece? If you were inspired to draw in a biomechanical style, share what you came up with in the comments or on one of my social media outlets. If you found this interesting, informative, entertaining, etc. Subscribe, like and share. And until next time, ciao, take care and happy drawing.